the today's session is to explore the challenges as well as the opportunities associated with the fortification and to define a roadmap for, for promoting fortification to curb malnutrition in the country. Um, in the country. With this uh, short remark now, without taking much of time, I would like to invite uh, Mr. Hemant Malik, who is the co-chair for Fikki Food Processing Committee, to deliver his welcome remarks. Uh, he has been working, he took over his assignment in October 16, and prior to this, he has worked as Division Chief Executive Trade, Marketing and Distributor for ITC FMCG. And uh, he joined the organization way back in 1989, since that he is chairing up at ITC. And uh, so Hemant, sir, over to you for your uh, welcome remarks for the session today. Right. Um, thank you, Abhinav. I hope I'm audible. You're very much audible, sir. Uh, a very uh, good afternoon uh, to all of uh, all the people. On behalf of Fiki, it's a matter of great pleasure to welcome you all. And particularly, I would like to welcome our guest of honor, Shri Arun Singhal, the Chief Executive Officer of FSSAI, along with Ms. Enoshi Sharma, Director of FFRC FSSAI. Today, we have an eminent panel of speakers, and I would like to welcome them. Mr. Suresh Lakshmi Narayanan, National Program Manager of Nutrition International, uh, Dr. Sharika Yunus, Nutrition Specialist with World Food Program, and uh, Ms. Deepti Gulati, the Head of Programs uh, GAIN. Along with that, a uh, lot of development partners, the stakeholders from industry, the wheat flour millers, and, and all the others who are joined us today uh, for this webinar. Sir, uh, we are indeed honored and humbled by your presence today, and I would like to personally thank you uh, during this COVID time for the immense support that you and your team have provided to the industry. And as we were just saying, sir, we were also working along with you to make sure that the food can reach to people's house and their kitchens. And I think all our uh, the entire uh, ecosystem of, of, of food processing has done a commendable job uh, during this uh, tough times. So the topic today is about fortification, and I think there are many experts uh, in this room. Uh, all I would like to say is that uh, amongst all tools and methods available, uh, food fortification uh, to, it seems to be the most impactful tool to add vital micronutrients to the food during its manufacturing uh, process. Uh, I want to share uh, two experiences with you, sir, uh, because uh, not only am I chairing the food uh, processing uh, 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 committee for FIKI, but I also uh, am the divisional chief executive of ITC's food business. And we have the unique uh, situation that A, we are one of the India's largest uh, packaged ATA sellers. And B, we are also maybe the top three or top four MEDA consumers in the country as well, sir, through our products of Ashirvad ATA as well as our biscuits and noodles. So I wanted to talk about both these um, uh, portions uh, with my experience, uh, thanks to uh, our work with FSSAI. So if you look at, first I'll talk about the ATA part of the business. If you look at packaged, branded packaged data in India, it's actually a very small business. If you look at data consumption, it is universal, at least in the north, the west, and even east part of India. And now it's also moving significantly in South India as well. But most of this data that is consumed is either in the form of loose data, or it is in the form of people taking the wheat and grinding and getting the data made out of that. The packaged data business is small, maybe about 10%. And within that, if you look at the portion which actually pays GST, which is the one which is an organizing is only 5%. So if you look at, do I, is ATA, can be a, is wheat a good vehicle? It can be a good vehicle. But when we look at ATA, so we, we had this debate uh, earlier um, and, and we said no, but we should still try. And we were one of the first, uh, Ashirwad ATA launched its fortified brand about fortified uh, ATA about two years back, and we did not find sufficient ex good experience about it. Before that, sir, I want to make one more point on ATA, is that packaged ATA is consumed only by the top SEC AB because it's usually much more expensive than the loose ATA as well as the, uh, uh, you know, gehun leke jo piswate hain. And if you look at the Region-wise also, in fact, North package data is actually the smallest compared to the overall data that gets consumed. And markets like UP and Bihar, the penetration of branded package data is extremely small. Coming back to our experience, when we had done the fortification, we did press conference, we advertised, uh, uh, advertised it. And then we went back to the consumer to understand that why is it that they are not preferring fortified data to normal data? 
what came out was very interesting, sir. One is that when they look at wheat, because when you look at atta and wheat, wheat is seen as absolutely foundational food in ensuring health for the family. And therefore, women go to a great length to buy the wheat, to clean it, and then to get it ground, because they believe it captures, that grain captures the entire purity uh, itself, and it is wholesome, and it is nutritious. When you look at fortified wheat, they believe that it could, it is got compromised, because how can you compromise wheat itself? Wheat is pure, wheat is complete, right? It is good for my family, I feed it. The moment you are adding something to it, are you making something, you know, will my uh, food not be tasty? Will my atta not be tasty? Will it not be soft enough? Will it be of the same quality? Are you adding it because the quality of wheat was not very good? These are some of the questions that came in, and this is based upon consumer work that we had done. So then we try to understand that why is it that they don't have the same question when it comes to salt? Because salt is fortified for years. Why don't they have the same concern when they are buying oil? Because oil, a lot of oil today is, is, is fortified. And then you understand that actually, because all these products, when you look at salt or oil, you don't eat them directly. It is part of your cooking. It goes in in one element of it. And the food and the taste and the nutrition comes from all, every other element that comes in. But when it comes to atta, you actually take that flour, you make chapati out of it, you have not added anything to it. So anything added to it is seen as not a good thing from a consumer perspective. Moving to the next aspect, which is also from wheat grain, which is as far as maida is concerned. Now, when you look at maida, how do you consume maida? Maida gets consumed in the form of bread. It gets consumed in the form of biscuits. It gets consumed in the form of noodles. It gets consumed of many snacks, namkeens, samosas, everything that gets made. So then if that maida has got any fortification, I don't notice that because it is easy. It is becoming so then it behaves the same way like you know, a fortifying oil or fortifying salt takes place. The second aspect about maida is that it is not seen as healthy from consumer perspective because there is some brand removal that takes place. They believe it is difficult to digest. So when we did a consumer work in terms of if the maida is fortified, we found a great resonance coming in towards that. So our view is that when we are looking at using wheat flour for fortification, it is the, the way to look at it is the same way we've looked at from salt or edible oil, is to look at maida as a source, because that gets consumed. And even from a price perspective, it gets added to the product price, right? Because finally, you buy a biscuit, you're not looking at, you know, whatever it is. So is that that minor impact, uh, you know, can be managed uh, or, or onto that as well. So to conclude, I think we should look at, when we look at wheat flour fortification, we should look at a solution which has a wide impact. Uh, which goes to every household because biscuits is consumed in north, in east, in west, and south, across. It is consumed across socioeconomic class, uh, classes. It is much easier to do because you have to do across some, you know, and, uh, uh, across some flour mills as well. And most importantly, there is no consumer dissonance that you are creating with your solution that you're looking at. So these were my uh, uh, starting words, sir. Uh, over to you for your uh, comments, and we look forward to your uh, insights uh, and, and, and for a great session for the day. Thank you. Thank you very much, Shaman. That was a very, very interesting to uh, consumer behavior and what do they expect? And the point you made about maida being a better vehicle than wheat flour is an interesting point. So we'll keep that in mind as a regulator. Whenever we make regulations, we'll keep this in mind. But let me start by wishing all of you, Mr. Shaman Palik, all his colleagues from Fiki, the distinguished panelists today, and all the other people who have joined this webinar. I wish you all a very good afternoon. And uh, uh, let me begin by saying that uh, as regulators, we realize we are very well aware of the fact that we will be very effective only if all the FBOs and the industry is with us. They, we collaborate with them and we have their active cooperation. And in that context, of course, the uh, can you hear me? I have lost your video for a moment. Am I audible? You are audible and visible, sir. Okay, thank you. So in that context, the role of for 10 seconds, but we can hear you now, sir. Yes. Okay. So therefore, uh, as I was saying, collaboration with all the stakeholders, and the FBOs is very, very important. And therefore, the role of federations like FIKI becomes very, very important. It is a pleasure to see, I'm indeed gratified to see that FIKI has been with us in all our endeavors, 
they have supported all the positive moves that we have made and they've provided very valuable feedback from time to time so it's been a very fruitful and good cooperation and collaboration and i hope it will continue like this in the future also uh, about fortification i don't really have to tell you very much all of you are aware about the facts which uh, have led to uh, fortification being used as a vehicle in india we have chronic malnutrition there's a triple burden of malnutrition and micronutrient deficiency is a very very common phenomenon if you look at the prevalence of anemia for instance in women and children it appears that almost 50% of them are anemic which means that there is a higher risk of low birth weight babies and small babies when they are born they start lives on a on the back foot because being low birth weight they have many complications so for the health of citizens anemia is a major problem micronutrient deficiency is a major problem and uh, if we uh, look at estimates of the disability adjusted life years lost because of anemia estimates seem to be lose 47 million dalis on account of anemia if you were to translate that to the economic cost in terms of productivity of one person over one year it is a loss of about 1.5 lakh crore rupees it is a huge huge loss to the country and if we go for fortification then uh, it does appear from studies that at least third of the cases of anemia or in fact even more perhaps can be tackled and we would have higher productivity and uh, have better health of citizens so the case for fortification and the need for fortification is very very clear and uh, in fact i was very surprised to when i was in the health department in the ministry to see that anemia is not confined to poor citizens alone in rich families well to do families also we have anemia people like my daughter could be anemic so it's very very widespread it's not confined to one strata of society and therefore fortification of staple foods is a very good vehicle it has the potential of reaching every household whether it is a rich household or a poor household everybody will benefit from it and therefore the national nutrition strategy and the kuposhan mukt abhiyan bharat have recognized fortification as a very important strategy to combat malnutrition now uh, in north india at least wheat is widely consumed it is uh, an important staple diet in the south of india if you look at india as a whole perhaps then rice has more consumers so uh, fortification of rice is a slightly expensive business it has cost implications because rice is being supplied to the pds in every state in the country so we were estimating that the cost of fortifying all rice uh, in the pds would be about 2500 crores per year extra but even that kind of expenditure is eminently justifiable so we are pitching for it we are making a case for it and trying to convince the finance ministry that it will be a worthwhile investment to make fortification of rice mandatory similarly now we are at a stage where we are talking of making fortification of oil and milk mandatory and a question has been asked by the government why not ghee also we are examining that from a technical point of view so maybe sometime in the near future within 6 months or so fortification of oil and milk and ghee would be made mandatory but today we are talking about wheat of course and wheat flour and maida uh, here again as i said the average consumption of a citizen is about 150 to 300 grams per day in the northern regions of the country so as himant pointed out yes very little of this is from processed packaged atta most of it is from either purchasing wheat and then converting that into atta or purchasing loose atta so that is something we have to tackle in the future but to my mind you know every good practice ultimately gains currency only when people become aware about the benefits of that move and therefore we have to focus upon making aware of the benefits of fortification tomorrow if a person goes to a shop and says i want fortified atta which brand do you have how can i take that if you have loose atta is it fortified if there are 10 inquiries of this kind it does have an impact and it will uh, lead to a situation where consumption of fortified atta will gradually go up. now uh, wheat fortification you are speaking yes can you hear me am i audible yes sir yes sir okay, yeah. okay thank you now fortification of wheat fortunately 
wheat flour fortunately has a very low cost it is less than 10 paise per kilogram and it has no impact on the color or the taste or the smell of atta especially when you convert it into rotis or some other form the nutrients are heat stable they are not lost during the cooking process so it's a very easy thing to do it is a very cost effective way of intervening the cost is not very high in the case of rice it is 7 to 8 times higher than what it is for wheat flour so it's very cheap it's stable and it's tested it's a good technology some businesses have already taken the lead and they are voluntarily fortifying their wheat flour and maida and they have been supplying this to state governments also the department of food and public distribution has issued an issued an advisory to all states that they should be supplying fortified wheat flour in the pds system and at present there are five states who have already started supplying fortified wheat flour to people uh, but you know it is imperative that this is extended and it reaches to all the uh, people in the country it reaches the masses for that the wheat millers and wheat flour manufacturers have to adopt fortification voluntarily they should come forward i would say and we are all as aware citizens of this country i think it's almost our duty to provide this benefit to the citizens of citizens of the country if you provide fortified uh, atta then it will make its way to people and then there will be benefits so i think it's almost our duty to start doing this voluntarily the question of mandatory fortification would come later perhaps and we would not really i think there should be no need to do that if everybody does it voluntarily uh, as of now there are 12 brands i am told of fortified wheat flour in the market but uh, that is quite low even if we have 10% of the market or 5% of the market i would expect that all the manufacturers should switch over to fortified uh, wheat flour it is very easy to do so you can do that so considering that it is a well established fact that uh, micronutrient malnutrition can lead to lower productivity it will lead to healthcare costs it will lead to uh, losses for the entire country poorer health for the citizens of the country uh, and by incurring a very minimal cost of fortification the disease burden can be reduced substantially so i would really expect uh, all of you i would call upon all of you to go in for uh, fortification of wheat flour and maida voluntarily and uh, we will provide technical support through the ffrc director of FF, ffrc inoshi sharma ji is there with us today she will continue with you in the end i would only like to again take a cue from what heman said that until we educate the masses about the benefits of fortified until we create a demand for fortified Uh, wheat flour and maida things will not really happen so all the manufacturers who are fortifying their uh, flour and maida uh, should join us we also will do this they should join us in publicizing the benefits of fortification and generating a demand for fortified atta in the country the day every consumer asks for fortified atta our job will be done things would become much simpler So in the end, again, I'll thank Fiki for organizing this event. We are grateful for your support and collaboration. We look forward to it in the future also. Thank you very much. All the best. Over to you, Hemant. Thank you very much, sir, for your very clear and specific uh, way of looking at it. And and we look forward to the other speakers, and then we will have a conclusion on this one. And thank you for. Uh, coming to fiki and you know being there with us and you know we will uh, continue to be with you uh, up there are many agendas that uh, we have to keep on uh, working with you and i'm sure sir we will look forward to your guidance and, and look forward for a, a good term for you sir yeah, thank you uh, thank you so much, yeah, so much uh, sir yeah uh thank you so much uh, heman sir for thank you to you sir and as i rightly said by heman sir i mean uh, sir fikki along with its members will always be there to support uh, in fsc engagement and as you rightly said we look forward to the way to promote uh, awareness around food fortification among the masses i think that's hold the key in today's time if you want to make a, a healthier generation going forward and to defeat the purpose of uh, you know malnutrition in the country 
uh, without taking much time, I will now move on to the next speaker. We have uh, Ms. Inoshi Sharma. She is director of FFRC, FSCI, and uh, Inoshi ma'am. And we all know, I mean, how strongly and uh, uh, broadly you are taking care of the communication part at FSCI and all the good work is being done from the FSCI office. Thank you so much, ma'am, and over to you. Thank you so much. Um... And uh, good afternoon to everybody here. I've got a very short presentation to make uh, in which, you know, I want to give some facts and figures about the process of fortification and how fortification is so uh, beneficial to us. So I just request the organizers to please uh, put up the PPT. So I just want to mention while it's getting started that, you know, at FSSAI, whenever we come out with standards for fortification, they are done um, in a very scientific manner. We've got scientific panels, which actually based on the RDA recommendations and then discussions with dietitians, nutritionists, scientists, doctors, then come out with these regulations. So any concern that people have regarding toxicity is taken care of because it makes sure that the recommended dietary allowance of any person is never exceeded. So if a person is having fortified atta throughout the day also, I mean, it would not become toxic. Rather, uh, their uh, micronutrient deficiencies to a certain extent will be taken care of. So uh, next, please. So, um, if we have a look at this particular slide, what we were, uh, the previous one, please. So, um, staples like salt, oil, milk, wheat flour, maida, and rice have been allowed under the FSSAI regulations for fortification. And in wheat flour and maida, we have iron folic acid B12, which can be placed along with six other nutrients as voluntary addition. So while it's not mandatory to add all the six other nutrients, but they can be added also. And iron helps in fighting anemia. Folic acid is important for fetal development among uh, expecting uh, women. And B12, of course, is good for nervous system. And why B12 becomes extremely important, especially for vegetarians, is because you do not have a vegetarian source of B12. So for those who are uh, particularly vegan, for them, it becomes a good source. Next, please. So at FSSCI, while we've set up standards and we do a lot of advocacy, for instance, we are you know, engaging with you. We would also be engaging with consumer awareness and promoting you know, joint marketing campaigns. We also have training and capacity building for the FPOs. So all those of you who are present here who want more information, kindly mail us at the FFRC website. We have training modules in case your people who are involved in this process need certain information, training that can be done. We also have approved labs where the product, if, has, if it has to be tested, can easily be done with. Next, please. So this is just uh, the broad levels that have to be done um, based on our notification, which came out in 2018 for wheat flour and maida, uh, as to how the um, fortificants are to be added per kg. Next, please. So for all those of you who are interested in fortifying a wheat flour or maida, what is really important is that while you are getting your registration or licensing done, you also get your plus F logo registered, which is done at the same platform of our phosphorus and earlier FRS. It is nothing different that has to be done. There is just a second icon which needs to be clicked and your endorsement will be done which is necessary for you to put the, put the plus F logo on your uh, bags or your packaging. Next, please. So this is just the support which I had already talked about, which is available to all of you. 
in terms of lands, in terms of um, uh, pre-mix suppliers. So we've got a list of pre-mix suppliers also uh, on our website from whom you can, uh, uh, you know, get your pre-mix. We also provide a lot of technical uh, support for capacity building. Next, please. So why does wheat flour become so important to fortify is because in all the programs you will see under the um, ICDS and the MDM programs, that means the food which is being provided at the Anganwadi level as well as in the schools during the midday meal program, as well as in the PDS. So all three combined, the requirement of wheat flour in the country is quite a lot. It is not a minuscule amount. But what happens in case of MDM and ICPS is because the procurement is so decentralized that at the local level, when the um, uh, officials are going and purchasing from the open market, many times fortified wheat flour is not available. So that is why we would request you that if your brand comes out with a fortified wheat flour version, which has the plus F on top of it, people, what we are doing is telling them you please pick up a bag which has plus F on it. So for them, it becomes easy to recognize, even if they are not familiar with your brand, they will recognize your bag from the plus F endorsement. Next, please. So these are some of the government safety net programs where wheat flour is being distributed. Like I just explained it to you with the help of Haryana. In six districts under MDM, in six districts under ICDS and five districts under PDS, wheat flour fortified is already being provided. So in all other states, next please, you will see that wheat flour is being given. Now what the advantage is, which we just discussed is that the consumption of wheat flour is high. It is growing even in um, the Eastern and the Southern parts of the country where it was not um, earlier preferred. And once you fortify wheat, uh, it does not change, you know, really. I mean, it's a myth that the color changes or the taste changes. It actually doesn't. Plus, F would definitely give you a edge in terms of your brand. And the cost per kg is only 10 pesa. So, in fact, the consumer will not even feel the pinch uh, per kg if they were to even be charged with uh, the extra cost. Next, please. So this is the costing that we worked out. If uh, the premix is added, and then how much would it cost? So it just comes to nine to ten pesa. Next, please. So there are these twelve brands which are available. Next, please. Usually these brands which are available, we also place them on our website. Next, please. So that, you know, uh, I mean, generally people get information about which brands are available, which are fortified. Next, please. This is some of the IC material which we have developed. You can always use this in your promotional activities also. Next, please. This is our website, www.ffrc.fssi.gov.in where all information is available regarding fortification. Maybe you can see it on the left side. The first uh, heading comes as plus F logo endorsement. So if you just click on here, it straight away takes you to our registration portal where you can easily get your endorsement done. So there's no extra cost. There's no extra effort that needs to be done. Next, please. We've already discussed the technical support that we are providing. We also have regional offices uh, where if you have any queries relating specific to a state where you can approach or you can always write to us. Next, please. So these are our partners. Our partners are present with us today also. And um, if you have some technical queries or you need help in implementation or setting up a plan, you can always reach out to our partners here. They will be most helpful in uh, any of your queries. Next, please. So that's it from me. Thank you so much. 
Uh, thank you so much, Inoshi, ma'am, for giving the very brief perspective on the food verification and all the engagement of FSCI and the support provided to the industry and stakeholders who want to get uh, involved with the food verification process. And uh, very thankful to H in letting uh, me also, and I, I'm sure other stakeholders also, the cost of fortification, which looks very minimal, 0 0.9 pesa or 10 pesa per kg. And uh, I'm sure if there is any further questions from the participants or stakeholders, we'll come back to you for, uh, to facilitate them. Uh, moving on to the next presentation, may I now request uh, Mr. Suresh Lachmi Narayanan, who works as a national manager with the Food Fortification and Nutrition International. Uh, Mr. Lachmi Narayanan, over to you. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, um, thank you so much uh, for the opportunity. And uh, at the outset, I would like to congratulate both FIKI and FSSAI for bringing up this discussion. This is very important and critical at this moment. Uh, while other staples are also gaining momentum, wheat flour is one that was the initial uh, staple uh, that had gained a lot of momentum. So it's important to also understand what are the uh, what are the uh, perspectives from the millers and also uh, try to uh, try to understand and also resolve some of the issues that we can take wheat flour fortification also along along with the other staples. Uh, today I am given the topic to talk about the technical aspects of wheat flour fortification. Um, uh, I will take you through the technology part, uh, which is which is simple, uh, but I will also talk about some other uh, corresponding uh, relating uh, relating topics to the technology aspect of it. Uh, can you go to the next slide? Yeah. Before we go into wheat flour fortification and details of it, uh, I'm sure there are a lot of millers watching it. But for those who are non-millers, uh, a quick understanding of uh, different terminologies which are interchangeably used uh, for the wheat flour. There are two tier, two two variants of wheat flour that we are talking about. One is the maida, and other one is the atta. So when we talk about maida, maida is it's also called as white, uh, refined white wheat flour, and uh, also it is uh, called the low extraction flour. And uh, when atta, atta is a whole wheat flour, the entire wheat grain that you see here, the entire grain is ground directly, and then around the 5 to 7 percent of bran is being taken out. Then that is uh, whole wheat flour, atta. And if the endosperm portion of the grain that you're seeing in the left uh, picture, the first picture, that particular portion is maida. So majority of the bran and the germ and the other components are removed. We see maida here, uh, the first one. Can you go to the next slide, please? OK, uh, I think uh, this particular slide, uh, the point has been very well uh, put forth by uh, both Inoshi Nam and uh, Arun sir about uh, why fortification of wheat flour is important. And also, he rightly mentioned that around 150 to 200 grams per day is an average consumption of wheat flour, uh, which is also being shown by the uh, NSSO uh, survey 2014. This also shows that 150 to 200 grams is the average per capita consumption of uh, wheat flour. So there is a huge opportunity for using wheat flour as a vehicle uh, to fortify. And uh, like Hemant uh, mentioned at the start of the discussion, it also goes into a lot of products that we consume in addition to just the cereal flour. So it, it, it is all the more important for us to think about wheat flour fortification much more seriously, both Atta as well as Maida. Can we go to the next slide, please? Yeah, so as far as the technical technology aspect of the wheat flour fortification, it is very, very simple. Uh, it, is, it is at the end of the milling process, before packing, there needs to be a doser set wherein the premix is added in a fixed ratio, uh, and that ratio depends on the uh, premix that we choose. Again, that in turn depends on the list of micronutrients that we choose. Like uh, the previous speakers mentioned, the number of micronutrients are minimum three iron, folic acid, B12. Minimum has to be uh, mixed to be called as fortified wheat flour. In addition to that, there are six to seven other micronutrients that are optional that can be added uh, based on the requirement. Uh, both if it's a state government or if it's if it's a central government, if it's a social safety net program, then based on the need of the population. And if it's a private uh, miller, 
then it is also based on the health claim or the value addition that the miller would want to make for the product so again the premix addition rate is fixed by the premix uh, premix vendor which uh, is calculated based on the dosage which is again fssai norm based but coming back to the process it is a simple dosing system uh, i'm sure the wheat millers must be uh, very familiar with adding the bread improvers or other uh, simple uh, additives that is regular part of uh, various uh, value added wheat flour varieties so it is again similar to that there is a doser that will be uh, that will be fixed at the end of the uh, product line and that will be uh, that will be uh, that has to be uh, that has to be synced with the wheat flour flow regularly to ensure that the premix is added on the right ratio and that needs to be monitored uh, i have put in three important points here one is uniform mixing of vitamin and mineral is very very critical so we need to regularly monitor the miller and the packaging in charge needs to be regularly monitoring whether the same rate of dosage is happening and also there needs to be regular record maintenance it has to happen uh, and one 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 simple but uh, easier automation is uh, to sync the uh, dosifier and the wheat flour conveyor the final product conveyor through the variable frequency drive so that it is easier to make sure if the conveyor is not working or the speed at which the conveyor is working the premix is also dosing so in a way we don't lose out premix which is also a costly product and we don't lose out the wheat flour also um, can you go to the next slide Yeah, so this is a more simpler uh, flow chart. The left one is a more simpler flow chart of the milling process. And the right picture in between uh, it shows that's a simple volumetric feeder wherein the premix is added and it is synced in order to dose it in a particular ratio. Um, as far as wheat flour fortification is concerned, there are three major important key quality parameters that we need to keep in mind and we need to keep looking for it again and again on, on an hourly or a shift basis. Uh, one is on the moisture content. A moisture content is very, very critical for the wheat flour, uh, be it fortified, be it non-fortified, because a premix is not going to add any moisture or not it going to absorb any moisture. So any product that any, uh, largely I'm talking about moisture content because uh, any complaint related to infestation or any 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 weevils or uh, or infestation or pest infestation in the product or spoilage in the product of wheat flour generally gets attributed to fortified wheat flour but generally fortification has nothing to do with the uh, with the spoilage or the shelf life the premix is in its own its own self very inert product so vitamins and minerals neither absorb moisture nor uh, release moisture so the moisture content of the normal flour has to be maintained at 10 to 12 percent to ensure uh, a clear long shelf life and so that the fortified wheat flour is also consumed and uh, it is consumed in a well and good uh, condition. Um, the second is about the choice of premix. Uh, when it comes to choice of premix, uh, it is important to see cost alone is not an important deciding factor. While competitive pricing is very important but the cost alone cannot determine because the premix quality is also very very critical i think one important realization that uh, that uh, that the entire fortification ecosystem is slowly realizing is also the need for having premix standards because the standards for the premix uh, again uh, if not regulated properly can lead to uh, compromised quality of premix and that again can lead to various other issues so that choice of premix from a good quality certified vendor FSSA has, has endorsed vendors list of premix vendors on its website under FSFRC website so please do check with them and you could get a competitive pricing but do not compromise the quality of premix on for the cost uh, third one is about the uniform mixing that we have discussed uh, in detail record keeping is, is very very critical and regular monitoring is very very important uniform non-uniform mixing can lead to a lot of issues uh, can also lead to non-compliance because we, you know, we are branding the product as plus f logo fortified product and if there is not adequate premix then it could attract uh, it could attract uh, fine or penalties so it is important that we maintain and regularly monitor if there is a possibility it is better to automate and 
and keep it more more uh, more, more more regularly uh, controlled situation can we go to the next slide please so a quick glimpse for uh, for uh, the the audience on how this wheat flour fortification generally is integrated a supply chain perspective uh, while initially the wheat grain used to travel directly from the warehouse to the uh, distribution warehouse now the on fortification the grain will be sent to a miller it will be milled and fortified there and then it will be again sent through the regular system you can see a yellow color or a golden color line in the entire supply chain pulling out the entire wheat into the miller and then pulling, putting it back into the system that's only one step that is being added in addition to so that will ensure fortified wheat flour as a value added product is given and that few quality assurance and quality control can be managed at the miller's end and at the warehouse end uh, to ensure that good quality product is being distributed by the public distribution system or the ICDS or the MDO. So while I have kept it till fair price shop, after fair price shop, it can be distributed to all three social safety net programs. And the PDS system is the backbone of the entire social safety net program, all three social safety net programs. And uh, we we have been working in collaboration with the uh, Food Fortification uh, Initiative, uh, another uh, international organization uh, who is supporting government of Haryana. Um, this is uh, this is the supply chain that is being followed there successfully, and like Inoshim Ram rightly mentioned, uh, it is continuously being distributed and it is also being scaled up, and now it is also economically breaking even. So there is a lot of momentum on wheat flour fortification. Even the consumers are finding a value in getting the wheat flour itself as a final product with the minimal cost being borne by the government, and they are able to re realize the value of the product. So uh, this is just a snapshot of the supply chain uh, for SSMP. Can you go to the next slide, please? Yeah, a, a little uh, detailed glimpse into the FSSA standards for fortification. So here, this table briefly explains about uh, the standards from Maida and Atta. Uh, we, only the top three, which is bare minimum requirement for flour to be wheat flour to be called as fortified wheat flour. I put it here. In that, if you see, we don't see a major change in terms of the uh, the uh, difference in between the Atta and Maida in terms of the levels of fortifications being used. But uh, in terms of, there is a star, if you could mention that, there is a star that says that sodium and ADTA has lesser addition rate and that is because of a higher bioavailability and there is a star in the uh, in the iron salt for ferrous sulfate, ferrous citrate and other ferrous, whether ferrous and ferric salts uh, to say that those are less bioavailable salts. So it is important to consider, especially with Atta talking to the point where Heyman had initially asked the question about, um, and the Atta having bran in it has fiber content in it, but also has certain anti-nutrients in it that reduces or that reduces the bioavailability of these micronutrients. Although it is available, it is not bioavailable. So that is why this addition and fortification is very critical and also it is important that we use a high bioavailable uh, complex or a compound sodium ion EGTA in the uh, in the high extraction floor the hot ATA so that we are able to deliver the micronutrient not only to the gut or stomach but also into the body so that is where this process uh, AI as uh, has notified this particular salt as a uh, recommended uh, iron compound for addition into ATA. And we see that there are a lot of evidences globally and in India or to say that the bioavailability of sodium and ADPA is important and WHO also recommends this and FSSA is also recommending it. So that that is something that is uh, that is a that is an ask and that is a clarification to the point that ATA be fortified with sodium and ADPA. And the Maida does not have much of a phytate content or anti-nutrients, so it can still be uh, fortified with ferrous sulfate, ferrous citrate, and other other compounds. Um, as far as folic acid and vitamin B12 are concerned, uh, the addition rates are mentioned here at the microgram level. So this again sums up to uh, 30 to 50 percent of the recommended dietary allowance requirement. So a body is being ensured about 30 to 50 percent of the 
daily requirements of these micronutrients through the product that is being given and that is also accounting for other sources of vitamins and minerals that is being taken up by the consumers. So there is no, uh, again uh, resonating with what Inoshin ma'am mentioned, there is no, uh, there is no iota of, uh, of worry about toxicity or additional micronutrients or overload of micronutrients being given through the food, food modification initiative. Can you go to the next slide please? Yeah, so quick glimpse of some few of some successful uh, ventures in the past uh, that uh, NI Nutrition International previously called as Micronutrient Initiative has supported. In West Bengal, there is a lot of evidences. This is also important to note that there is also in-country evidences that is also proven that wheat crop fortification can be an effective vehicle for fortifying. And here you could see one one uh, program that was started in Darjeeling district and that went that went to scale after this result has come wherein you could see that there has been a reduction in anemia among the adolescents and the women of reproductive age and the children in a, in a significant percentage and this has been over 24 months the feeding has shown a result so it is important that wheat flour fortification has evidence in country proven that this is, can be a successful vehicle for, 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 for reducing anemia and we, we should pursue it. Can you go to the next slide, please? Yeah, another important uh, program that was launched in Gujarat uh, was the wheat crop fortification program in Gujarat, and that had 10 micronutrients that had been scaled up across the entire state, and operational feasibility was established in this particular project. And again, here also, it started with the sim simple ICDS one single district model and then it scaled up to the entire state. So across the entire social safety net programs to all the beneficiaries. So that is that that shows that operation feasibility is, is there and is demonstrated in country already in the past for us to take it up and scale up. Can you go to the next slide please? Yeah, uh, one single note about Nutrition International. Uh, uh, we were previously known as Micronutrient Initiative and since nutrition is a broader agenda, we have rebranded ourselves and our focus has expanded. Uh, we have been present in India for more than 20 years now and we are working with the state government in, uh, across seven states um, and also with FSSAI and Government of India, other departments with Government of India, especially Niti Aayog and Department of Food and Public Distribution and also with Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, especially the uh, National Identity Deficiency Disorder Control Program for a long time. And in addition to that, we also have other verticals. We support the health systems, uh, strengthening components of various state governments. Uh, and also we, we provide technical support to the maternal and child health department, uh, child health nutrition division of Gujarat and Uttar Pradesh state specifically. So uh, across the age group, we cover, we, 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 we work with state governments basically to strengthen and support streamlining their programs and support the national government in framing policy. Yeah. Can you go to the next slide, please? Yeah. Thank you so much uh, for the opportunity. Happy to take questions. Uh, thanks, Mr. Suresh, for giving us the technical part of insight on the entire food process process and making all of us understand how this process actually takes place and also sharing the impact analysis which you have been able to force through your state level partnership. Uh, moving on to the next speaker, uh, we have Dr. Sarika Yunis. Uh, Dr. Sarika Yunis, uh, she is working with the World Food Program and she would like to share her insight on collaboration and working with the states. Uh, just a small request to all the participants, if you, since we have uh, eminent uh, speakers with us today in the panel discussion, if you have any question to them or if you have any query, please do put it in the chat box so that we can raise it uh, later on during the interactive session. Uh, thank you so much and over to you, Dr. Sharika. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, at the outset, I'd like to thank uh, the Food Safety Standards Authority of India 
as well as Fiki for giving the World Food Program the opportunity to present. Um, the World Food Program, for those of you who may not know, we are the food aid arm of the United Nations, and we've had presence of working, um, uh, and we've had experience and presence in India since 1963 of working very closely with the government on hunger and malnutrition related issues, both at the national level as well as at the state level. Um, for some reason, I have very bad connectivity at my end, so I hope I'm able to do a glitch free presentation. Um, but my presentation isn't very long. What I want to focus on is what is the support which is available from the development partners for mainstreaming fortified wheat flour, both in the safety nets as well as in the open market. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah, so uh, what I have here is a couple of uh, maps of the country showing um, the status of states which are already taking some action on the distribution of fortified wheat flour or propose to take some action on the distribution of fortified wheat flour. Um, and when I say propose to dis, uh, take action or are already distributing, it may not necessarily mean that entire states are covered. For example, in Haryana, only five districts in the state are covered. Um, so here, what you can see is that though large swaths of the country are beginning to get covered through fortified wheat flour in the public distribution system as well as the midday meal program, but there's a but there's still a very long way to go. Next slide, please. Um, here again. Uh, Two maps of the country showing in the first one the, uh, the states which are distributing or planning to distribute fortified wheat flour in the ICDS. Um, and you can see that uh, the map is hardly colored at all. We only have about three states uh, taking some action or already in the process of distributing fortified wheat flour. And there's, I mean, uh, as far as the ICDS system is concerned, there's a long way to go. Uh, when we look at the open market situation, this uh, the status is much better, and thanks to the food business operators, the rollers, flour millers, associations, and everybody else from the industry who's associated in this effort. Um, and I think if we look at fortified wheat flour, uh, perhaps today uh, the presence of fortified wheat flour is much better in the open market than in the food based safety nets of the government. Next slide, please. Next slide. Um, I, I'm not sure which, can, can we all see this slide where we're about the, that development partners can offer to the states? Um, so this, uh, the slide before that, please. Yeah, this one. Um, so in terms of the support that the, uh, that the development partners can offer to the states on wheat flour fortification, it's primarily around six areas. Uh, we can work closely with the roller flour millers, with the wheat flour millers and provide them with technical assistance. Or we can support states in terms of procurement. We can support states in terms of capacity building of a whole wide range of stakeholders. We can work on quality control and quality assurance with states. We can help states on monitoring and review, and then we can also work with states on behavior change communication. Um, I think from the very first speaker today, we understood the importance of behavior change communication and the need for it. Um, so uh, as partners, we are ready to support states wherever the need is on all of these six areas. Next slide, please. Uh, now, if we look at the technical assistance that can be provided to flour millers, and I'm sure my uh, the next speaker, Deepti Ji, will speak a bit on it um, in more detail, but let just wanting to throw a bit of light on what the areas where we can support them. We can support them in the selection of fortification, uh, the fortificants which need to be added. We can support them with equipment. We can support the millers with auditing and assessing uh, the selected uh, provisional wheat, uh, wheat flour mills in terms of GMP and GHP practices. We can develop protocols on good manufacturing practices, and we can also uh, provide them support in terms of reviewing the QC results which come from states and uh, which would come from the 
uh, lab and then letting them know what is the corrective action that needs to be taken or what are the steps that need to be taken so that an adverse report does not get repeated again. Uh, likewise, when we talk about the capacity building of different stakeholders, we can help in the development of training modules for a range of stakeholders. We can help in training of government staff. We can help in the training of millers, and we can also help in the training of the frontline workers. Um, next slide, please. Um, in, in terms of how we can help in the preparation of the different tender documents, whether it's in the procurement, whether it's in the procurement of the services of an NAB accredited lab, or it's in the can also help states which are interested in rolling it out or mainstreaming it in their food based safety nets in terms of developing budgetary requirements. Um, as far as the quality assurance and quality control is concerned, we can help in terms of laying out S on quality assurance and quality control in the rice mills. We can help out in third party lab testing. We can help out of the millers and providing them support uh, to the state labs to test micronutrients in fortified wheat flour, as well as building capacities of the food uh, safety officers in the state for supporting regulatory monitoring. Next slide, please. Um, in terms of monitoring and review um, as agencies where states require us, uh, we can do independent monitoring and provide feedback to the government. That would include collecting random samples of fortified wheat flour from the rice uh, from the wheat flour millers engaged in this, um, and then assessing it uh, for micronutrient content and feeding back to the government so that there's an independent loop which is also created in terms of how well uh, the fortification program is running on the ground. Um, in terms of behavior change communication, we can help in the development of prototype material. We can help in the development of communication strategies as well as a whole range of communication messages. Next slide, please. Uh, the partners who could help in uh, rolling out fortified wheat flour in the state, um, as well as support the initiatives of FFRC and FSSAI at the national level, um, are the partners who are already a part of this panel discussion, that is the Nutrition International, the Food Fortification Initiative, the Global Alliance for Improved Nutrition, and the World Food Program. Next slide. And for those of you interested uh, from the states or from the rice miller, uh, from the wheat flour millers, um, here are the contact details and email IDs of the development partners who can support uh, with you with any of the technical queries that you may have, any of the operational queries that, me, that you may have, and we stand uh, committed to helping any of the states um, that may come up with queries. As partners, we may not have presence in all the states, but between the four of us, I think we do have a widespread presence and we'd be ready to help with any support that may be required of us. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you so much, Dr. Sharika, for bringing the perspective from a development, per, per, uh, development partner side. I'm sure the whole drive and the momentum to escalate uh, use of food fortification cannot be done without support of partners like uh, WFP and the GAIN. Uh, moving on to the next, may I request Dr. Dipti Gulati she works as the head of the program for Gain uh, Gain India, and uh, uh, and over to you, Dr. Ditti. And she will now basically touch upon how the uh, they can support uh, to the millers in the food floor fortification process. Is a presentation as wheat flour fortification, yeah. bridging the nutrition gap, because this is exactly what wheat flour fortification does. So uh, whenever we are taking up fortification, specifically of wheat flour, there are some critical considerations. First is, is there a need and importance for fortification? Who should be the target population? What is the incremental cost? Is it easy to implement? Is there a regulatory support available? What is the acceptability by the consumers? Is it scalable? What is the impact? So I would be touching my presentation on all these aspects and saying why we have been able to work so successfully with a with lot of millers who are into wheat flour fortification. 
uh, CEO sir had in the beginning in his keynote address mentioned that uh, anemia is there for everyone. And that's so true. If we look at stunting, underweight, thinness in women, and we look at the uh, nutrition parameters in the highest income quintile and the lowest income quintile, what we find is that in the lowest income quintile, stunting, underweight, and thinness in women is higher. But when we look at anemia in children, anemia in women, there is hardly any difference. Again, when we look at consumption of iron-rich foods in the past 24 hours, as was collected under the National Family Health Survey 4, we find there is hardly any difference. So the poor consumption of micronutrient-rich foods and anemia affects everyone. So we need to make some efforts besides supplementation and dietary diversification to improve the anemia levels and food fortification, specifically fortification of wheat flour and rice offers us a tremendous opportunity. Let's see how micronutrients like iron, folic acid, B12 that are added to wheat flour impact our lives. When we look at iron, it is important for hemoglobin, it is important for carrying oxygen in the blood. It is important for immunity and it is very important for our brain development. And that is why it helps to prevent, uh, yeah, it helps to prevent anemia. It promotes growth. It prevents school learning and it builds our stamina to work. When we look at folic acid, it is important to form the DNA. It is important for forming the red blood cells in our body, for formation of neural tube and the spinal cord. And folic acid helps to prevent neural tube defects, premature uh, births, spina bifida, and an encephaly. I'm very happy to share with you something perhaps some of you may not know that October is the month of elimination of neural tube defects. So folic acid, which is very critical for uh, reducing the incidence of neural tube defect, is added to wheat flour. And the most important part of this being added to wheat flour and its contribution in reducing the mortality and neural tube defects is that Folic acid deficiency takes place in the first six weeks of pregnancy when a woman does not even know that she is pregnant and it can damage the growing fetus. So if wheat flour is fortified with iron folic acid and B12, you continue to get the consistent dose of folic acid, iron and B12, which helps to build up these stores of folic acid in the body. So when a woman becomes pregnant, there is a much reduced risk or none due to uh, folic acid deficiency leading to neural tube defects. Then there is vitamin B12. And as you know, had already mentioned, vitamin B12 is not found in uh, you know vegetarian foods. So it is very critical to take it as either supplements and it becomes very critical for those people who are vegetarians. So if you are adding vitamin B12 to wheat flour, it helps in a big way because it is important for building the nerve tissues, for brain function, and for red blood cell production. It prevents birth defects, it prevents fatigue, and it prevents dementia. Dementia means forgetfulness. So these three are the most critical micronutrients that are added to wheat flour through fortification, which help to improve our health. Now, cost to fortify wheat flour is very, very limited. It is not even 10 pesa. It is just between 5 pesa to 8 pesa per kg. And I really want to share that all the millers who have started fortification, they have not raised the cost of wheat flour on account of fortification because they feel that it is their service to the community to improve their health and they have absorbed these costs on account of better management of processes so the cost of fortification per se is just five to eight pesa depending upon the 
type of salt that is being used for fortification and on an annual basis it is just about 6 rupees 50 paisa to 8 rupees per kg uh, not per kg the entire cost of consuming fortified wheat flour so it is a very minuscule cost on a per person per year basis and the benefits are enormous we have extremely good regulatory support and an enabling environment has been created for scaling up fortification food safety and standards authority of india permits and advocates for fortification of staple foods standards for fortification of staple foods have been gazetted india's 10th 11th and 12th five year plans portion abhiyan which is the national nutrition mission as also the anemia mukt bharat mission also recommend food fortification specifically wheat flour fortification ministry of food processing industries government of india also provides financial assistance to food industry for capital equipment and its installation for undertaking fortification because it is considered as a value addition ministry of women and child development government of india ministry of human resource development now called ministry of education have made it mandatory to use fortified oil fortified wheat flour and double fortified salt in mid day meals and icds programs this actually gives a lot of incentive to the wheat flour millers to start fortification of wheat flour the department of food and public distribution government of india recommends distribution of fortified wheat flour through pdf i am repeating these because these are important but these have already been stated by co sir in his keynote address now when we look at that does it make any impact when we look at the underweight at all india level and underweight in rajasthan you see that they are very very comparable when you look at mothers who consumed iron folic acid tablet for 100 days or more as per nfhs4 at all india level only 30% women are consuming iron folic acid tablets for 100 days in a year at all india level and in rajasthan it is just about 17% but when we look at the anemia figures at the national level pregnant women 50% all women 53% and men about 23% and in rajasthan we have 46% 46.6% pregnant women who are anemic even though they were taking only 17% were taking iron folic acid tablets all women only about 47% are anemic and men only 17% are anemic these are much lower figures than the all india level i am not we have not done any study but these are nfhs 4 data and we are very happy to share that we introduced fortified wheat flour in the pds in rajasthan in 2012 and 2000 to 2014 maybe these uh, figures are low because people were consuming fortified wheat flour through the pds and that is why the anemia levels have come down in rajasthan so perhaps at the population level wheat flour fortification makes a difference so let's join hands and do it now we all know that food that we eat defines our health wheat flour fortification adds value to our food and that's why the approach that gain is adopted is as follows that we focus on roller flour mills and commercial chakkis we have also worked with village level fortification with working with very small chakkis at the village level the response was tremendous both from the uh, small mills as well as from the communities but we have continued to focus on roller flour mills because it is very easy for the roller flour mills to adapt the process of fortification with minimal equipment large scale production they undertake large scale production and hence on the economies of scale fortification becomes very very inexpensive when done at the roller flour mill or the commercial chakki level all the millers at roller flour mills and commercial chakkis have the technical knowledge and expertise because they do add uh, various powdered uh, products 
which are flour improvers for improving the quality of wheat flour. So they are familiar with the process of dispensing powdered flour improvers. Then these roller flour mills and commercial chuckies are also the suppliers to various end users like you and me. They supply wheat flour which to the market and we buy it from the market. They supply wheat flour to the food industry to make various food products which we buy. So they are the suppliers and we are the end users and if they start fortification, we benefit. They are also equipped with labs. Each roller flour mill and each commercial chakki has a lab which can be upgraded to detect micronutrients to ensure quality control. Even though it may not be quantitative, it can surely be qualitative. So what we started was, we started an active engagement for consensus building, which included bringing together all the stakeholders for formal and informal discussions. We discussed nutrition and health issues and highlighted the role of millers in malnutrition reduction. This encouraged millers a lot and they were ready to adopt fortification voluntarily. Then we also uh, offered and undertook industry assessment to understand how to build their capacity, what kind of an infrastructure they have, what kind of a manpower they have, and what kind of quality assurance, quality control measures they have, so that when we design a training program for them, it is as per their needs and not as per what we want to preach. We all, these engagements also helped us to manage the fears of the industry because they said you're adding something, you're adding iron. Will it make my wheat flour go dark, black? Will it impact the quality of uh, chapatis that, uh, that are uh, made at home? They had a lot of apprehensions and they also had a lot of myths. So our engagement, active engagement for consensus building helped to dispel all the fears, apprehensions and eliminate myths. And we also worked with the media to do the consumer education and for active scientific social media engagements. We strengthened the systems for external regulatory monitoring. We invited political leaders to launch fortified wheat flowers, which wheat, wheat flour at different places, which signaled the political will. We organized media workshops to create awareness and demand through print, electronic, and social media. There was a very interesting thing. Someone just mentioned that Ata Kala Ho Jata Hai. We got the media to actually use that fortified wheat flour at the uh, venue of the meeting as as well as we gifted fortified wheat flour to the media they consumed it and then they wrote praises about the importance of fortified wheat flour and that helped in scaling up so the framework that we have used for initiating and scaling of wheat flour fortification includes production and distribution which means meeting with plant managers senior staff for consensus building and providing them assistance to develop uh, production lines which can adapt fortification legislation and quality control so we also discussed about the quality analysis report accredit uh, and accreditation uh, by the lab support industry to apply for plus f registration and uh, you know, print a nutri panel, which is compliant to the FSSAI norms. Awareness generation, which is building stakeholders, alliances, hold consultations, organize media workshops, monitoring and evaluation to undertake the process of monitoring and reporting, pick up market samples to test, use data for course correction and retraining wherever required. We've also done the assessment of results and dissemination. So uh, these are the basics which form the framework. Now I would be discussing what specific support that we have given to the industry to initiate and scale up wheat flour fortification. These include training uh, and capacity building of managerial staff, 
as well as the technical staff on process of fortification and quality control, develop manuals and implementation protocols, which have been shared with FSSCI and they are on the FSSCI FFRC website. We have also trained them on premix management, identification of premix suppliers as per FSSCI's approved list, estimation of premix requirement as per the production capacity installed as well as functional capacity of the roller flour mill and the commercial chakki, procurement, utilization and stocking of premix and maintenance of stock registers. Then we've also provided support to the industry for making packaging and labeling changes, which included review of label and nutri panels so that they could be aligned with the FSSCI guidelines. Advise the industry to ensure incorporation of required changes redesign the package with plus f logo because it is the plus f logo that is being propagated to say that this product is adequately and appropriately fortified then of course we have the endorsement support and facilitation for the process of plus f registration endorsement of brands for fortification under the current license and emailing the packaging shots to uh, the FSSCI FFRC website because it is they who uh, put it on their website as a matter of in, uh, encouragement. Then for monitoring and quality assurance, quality control, we pick up these samples on a regular basis, get them analyzed for micronutrients present in it from the NABL accredited labs every six months. And we also have uh, supported the industry to adopt uh, good manufacturing practices and good hygienic protocols uh, for uh, processing. I would also like to share with you that we have worked very closely at the state level. And as you can see, all the uh, chief ministers have been invited and the key ministers have been invited at the launch of our different fortified food products. Gains India footprint is really huge. We are working in 20 states. Currently, 15 states are actively into uh, fortification of different commodities, which include, uh, uh, you know, uh, edible oil, through which we are uh, reaching almost 84.5 crore beneficiaries. We are into different states for milk fortification, and we are reaching 1.86 crores through uh, milk fortification. And we are also working with the state government, specifically Kerala and Himachal Pradesh, where we are supporting mainstreaming of fortified wheat flour into the PDS system. We have also done everything to mainstream fortified wheat flour in the, in the state of Tripura. It's only going to start its implementation very soon. And we are also working with a lot of private millers who are fortifying uh, wheat flour uh, on their own initiative voluntarily as their contribution to improving uh, improving the quality of life as well improved nutritional status of people in India. And I'm very happy that uh, ITC, when we started with wheat flour fortification, we had the privilege of working with Mr. Chitranjan Dar who was the head of uh, food business operations. And we supported, we shared our experience and we also provided training to a couple of mills that uh, ITC was doing for uh, providing support on fortification. And we feel very happy to be partnering with Pillsbury, with Unilever and with ITC and also with the uh, future group to support and scale up fortification of vitra that goes through the open market channels. And uh, contrary to what has been some person, you know, uh, experience that uh, my previous speaker had shared, Mr. Heman, I would also like to share that when we worked with the uh, communities, when we checked with them about their uh, feedback on how fortified wheat flour was good for them, believe it or not, it was very heart touching because they could not say that they are feeling strong. Lot of women said, Ab hamari nahi dukhti. Ab humko nahi hoti. 
and as a woman for me that was very very touching because i felt that with our work we've been able to do something in rajasthan we worked very closely uh, in mdm also we are working very closely in up also with mdm uh, to the centralized kitchens of akshay patra and when we talk to the school principals they said that after fortified wheat flour was introduced the absenteeism has gone down children are concentrating on their studies and that is a big endorsement for wheat flour fortification and i think all of us should join hands I'm very happy to share that with all the different products that we are supporting for fortification which is edible oil milk and wheat flour gain is currently reaching 89.2 for or 24 crore people or 892 million people through various fortified food products the lessons learned are that staple food fortification is doable very cost effective and evidence based based strategy it needs to be scaled up it does not lead to any organoleptic changes and acceptability is high it poses no risk as food consumption is self limiting and whatever micronutrients that are added they get absorbed very well it is a preventive measure for micronutrient malnutrition and it helps to bridge the gap between the need and the require what we are consuming processing is very simple and industry can do it at a very low investment industry is very responsible and it ensures appropriate fortification and it takes a lot of pride in contributing to nutritional improvement i can share with you a uh, couple just about a year back i was in haryana and we were talking to haryana roller flower millers association and they all the said uh, yes i'm fine we, we have exceeded a lot of time uh, for, for the today's session if you can be a little brief and sum it up very yes. quickly it will be interest of everyone thanks yes i'm just finishing so it they take a lot of pride conditions for successful fortification program require political will adequate legislation industry support positive awareness to be created and supported by media and consumer acceptance food fortification works and what all what we need is a will to implement fortification has very rich returns on very low investment so let's not miss out on the opportunity flour fortification is an unfinished agenda so let's join hands to improve the quality of life and provide good health let's eat right let's eat fortified thank you uh, thanks a lot dr dipti i mean this is a very insightful and detailed presentation wherein you talked about the fssa framework how they are enabling the process of food for in the country and for the support which can be provided through gain to all the partners not only at the central level but also at the state level uh yes. moving on to the next session on the interactive session i got a couple of questions which i like to pass it on and uh, i request all the eminent panel members to take this up in in the best interest of trying just try to be very limited with your um answers so the first question which i've got is uh, there has been a change in the rda for the indians would this affect the fortification level of micronutrients Yeah, Dr. Deepthi or Dr. Sharika, okay. you would like to take this up? Uh, I I can just say that once the recommended dietary allowances are revised, automatically the uh, you know the fortification levels for different commodities would also be considered for revision. Of course, it is for FSSI to take the call and. through their scientific panel it would be because fortification levels are designed at uh, 25 to 30% of the recommended dietary allowances so currently we are uh, doing it with the standards that were in vogue now that new standards have been uh, in place a scientific panel of fssci would certainly take cognizance of it thank you uh thanks dr can i so, yeah can i just Please add in uh, uh, the pravina So yeah, yeah, sure. just to add on to what uh, DPG was saying, I think FSSA is uh, going to take that uh, is going to take that call and is going to decide on that. But in the meanwhile, uh, uh, a quick note on that is that, uh, for example, the RDA was the fortification standard was framed on the uh, 
male RDA, male iron requirement per day. So that was initially around 17 mg, but now I think with the revised one, if I remember correct, it is around 19 mg. So it is not a very significant difference, but uh, again, the call has to be taken. Maybe there might be differences in the percentages, but it is not that significant a change uh, as far as male RDA for iron is concerned. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thanks, Dr. Uh, Mr. Suresh. Uh, the next question which I have is, uh, is it mandatory for every miller who are into wheat or maida fortification to have an in-house facility? I mean, I, I believe this was discussed somewhere in the presentation also. So, is it mandatory from FHC side? May I respond? Yeah, please, please go ahead. Uh, actually, uh, in-house facility for what? I saw the message, but I couldn't understand in-house facility for what? Because if it is in-house facility for fortification, you can't do fortification if you don't have premixes and if you don't have a micro doser. But most of the millers do have a micro doser because they are adding flour improvers uh, to the uh, packaged wheat flour. So if even if they have to buy it, it doesn't cost a huge amount it's one time investment and the other facility is that they already have a lab so we can provide them with testing kits that they can do a qualitative test to see whether the wheat flour which they are packing is fortified or not and uh, it gives a range of uh, fortificant due to the color depth but certainly we are not expecting them to set up a lab within their facility no yeah so dr nitika clarified this she wanted to understand in a house facility for testing of fortified food within no. the unit premises it, basically it is not it is not mandatory mm -hmm. but most of the labs uh, most of the facilities roller flour mills have a small lab for moisture testing for any uh, other uh, parameters so Certainly. if required that can be upgraded but it is not mandatory it is not required at all Okay, thanks, Dr. Dipti Gulati. Okay, we, moving to the next question. What is the percentage absorption of fortified iron through fortified wheat flour in different age groups and gender? Almost 80 to 90 percent, which is there <laughs> in fortified wheat flour, is absorbed. What is inherently present is bound by uh, phytates. So, Jo Gehume. As a gehu ka dana, jo usme iron hota, that is bound, and that is why even though uh, wheat flour, wheat grain may have high levels of iron, it is not available because it is bound by the phytates. But when we are adding uh, iron through fortification, that is added iron, and that gets absorbed almost 80 to 90 percent in the body mm -hmm. it is very highly bioavailable that is why we are recommending fortification and that is why you saw the results in rajasthan yeah yeah that's very commandable yeah, right. i would say um, can i also add in abhinav, the, uh, abhinav? can, yeah, yeah, can i come in yes yeah, sir, no sir, i was sir, just sir. saying that yeah no i was just saying that uh, uh, fssai recommends a different um, each different um, salt has its own, uh, let's say, bioavailability. The highest bioavailability that is there amongst the different iron salts is for sodium iron EDTA. So sodium iron EDTA is the most bioavailable form that can be used. Um, usually bioavailability of different salts is compared with ferrous sulfate. Ferrous sulfate is assumed to have 100% bioavailability. There are some salts which have lower bioavailability than, um, than 100%. So basically what is available to the body depends on the, sort, uh, on the salt of iron that is being used or on the salt of any other micronutrient that is being added along with iron. Um, I think Suresh also wanted to add something. So I'll just stop here and ask Suresh to add. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Sharika. I think you made a very valid point that I also wanted to add. So sodium ion EDTA is uh, important. That is uh, that has higher bioavailability. So it is even if you look at the levels that I mentioned in my presentation, the levels are low because uh, at a lower level they are able to have better bioavailability. That is point number one. Point number two is also this is a, uh, the question is a looks very straightforward, but it is a very complicated question per se. Because uh, the answer to this question is also depends on individual to individual basis. 
at a population level we will be able to say uh, i think deepthi gulati um, madam had answered it that is at a population level but at an individual level if even if you look at the recommended dietary allowance of icmr guidelines there are multiple categories in it uh, male female even in male female there are different categories like sedentary work moderate, moderate work and hard work so it depends on the individual's uh, requirement body's requirement and also the level of uh, work that they do level of uh, food that they take the entire it is a very it is a it is a little complicated uh, uh, complicated subject to give a straight answer to but the point is that at a population level we follow the rda the national Institute of nutrition icmr has given us the guideline so based on that the fortification standards have been developed by the scientific panel of fssci and that that can be uh, straight away followed and scaled up over to okay. you. Uh, yeah, yeah. Thanks, Mr. Suresh, for the technical clarification. Uh, we have another question saying that uh, do we, is there any fortification program for basin, the gram flour? There is no fortification standards for gram flour as of now. Okay, so that's clarifies. Uh, uh, where, where one can get the details of the total cost for establishing uh, wheat, oil, and ras fortification units at one place? Is there any one document or one source of information where any uh, participants or stakeholders can get information for the I, cost? I, I, I think FFRC website is the go-to website. Yes. And then you will get all the answers at one go. Uh, okay. And uh, FFRC can... website. Sure. So, I mean, the participant who read the question can certainly look out at the FFRC website for all the information yeah. related to the cost related to the setting up of units. Uh, so one technical question as uh, folic acid is heat sensitive and rapidly decomposes in the presence of light. How to ensure the final food contain folic acid present? Yeah, good question. Uh, can I start by answering this and then uh, others can join in? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Mr. Suresh. So yeah, folic acid is uh, heat sensitive and other vitamins are also heat and light sensitive. So. Um, Again, when we talk about wheat flour fortification per se, there is not much of a process loss because it is just powder powder mixing and there is no heat applied to it. But I am assuming you're talking about the for the products that will be produced out of this fortified wheat flour. So for that already, if you if that's when the wheat flour millers when they ask for the label claim, the premix vendors will already build in certain amount of overages. It's called overages in the technical terms or in the in the industry terms. So the overages is basically they will add on 20 to 10 to 20 percent of additional amount to also already account for any losses that will happen due to light or any losses that will happen due to heat or any other processing. So that is when, uh, when for example, in rice, the requirement might be different because rice, the, the process is an extrusion technology. But in wheat flour, it is direct, just simple mixing after the wheat flour. So whatever the heat that will be applied for making a roti or a chapati or whatever bread making or others, that will be already adjusted in the 10 to 20 percent of the overages that the premix hunter will give to ensure the label claim is added for the uh, the uh, for the uh, miller to produce the fortified wheat flour. Yeah, over to you, thanks. I only have to second what Suresh has already said. There are enough overages, and the com and the uh, form uh, formula that is used or the compound that is used for uh, folic acid that is added, that is uh, that does not get destroyed just by making chapatis or even making uh, because when we are talking about wheat flour, we are talking about wheat flour when it is consumed as chapatis. And that is where it is contributing to folic acid. And uh, I can assure you that when wheat flour is fortified with folic acid and in countries where it has been used extensively, the new, uh, percentage of neural tube defects has come down drastically. And hence, it is very, very critical to be adding folic acid. It is stable. It is not food. Uh, it is not heat labile. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Dr. Deepthi and Mr. Suresh for taking all the questions. We got another some questions, but in the interest of time, uh, I'll my suggest to the members uh, that we will mail this question to the FFRC and we'll come back to you with the response uh, at the earliest.
and uh, we are at the end of the session today on behalf of Fikki, Ms. Jyoti, which she had to go urgently for an another uh, meeting, so she could not be able to deliver the vote of thanks. So for, on behalf of Fikki, first of all, I would like to propose a hearty note of thanks to our guest of honor, Sri Ar Arun Singhalji, CEO of FHSAI for gracing today's webinar and delivering the keynote address. We thank you, sir, for your thought-provoking address, and I'm pretty sure concerned stakeholders must have noted your suggestion, which is very clear and evident. Uh, my special thanks to our distinguished speaker of the day, uh, Inushri Sharma, ma'am, from FFRC, FHSAI, uh, Dr. Dipti Gulati, Dr. Sharika, Dr. and Mr. Uh, Suresh Lashminarayanan, uh, for being uh, the eminent speaker for the today, and also to Mr. Hemant Malik for giving his uh, welcome remarks and putting together uh, valuable expertise and ex perspective from an industry industry side. Uh, I would also like to extend thanks for FSSA for giving Vicky this wonderful opportunity to engage on this very important food fortification agenda and to F FFRC for all the, their support from time to time in take, making this program a successful one. Vicky would be extremely happy and keen to closely engage with FSSA and be part of this much needed movement in future as well. Let us all be a part of inspiring trust, ensuring safe and nutritious food. Uh, and I'm sure webinar uh, would not have been successful without participants. I'm very heartened to see a good number of participants turning around. I would like to thank all our distinguished delegates from development partners, stakeholders from the industry, be it from millers, experts in fortification, domain, et, et cetera, for paying their valuable attention and their participation at the Q&A session. Vicky would always keep in maintaining its momentum for creating awareness about safe and nutritious food and work together in interest of the food uh, regulatory ecosystem. Thank you all. Stay safe. Stay healthy. And uh, we look forward to some other forum where we again reiterate the agenda of food fortification or any other which is concerned uh, the human food safe, human safety or in the interest of food ecosystem. Thank you so much once again to all the panel Thank members. You. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.